Okay, so we've got the uh, inner gearbox cover off and so that's revealing all the gears. So we've got the, the gearbox main shaft here with one set of gears on. This is a gearbox lay shaft with a, another set of gears on and um, the gears work by which, which gears are meshed with which and that gives you the different ratios. Then on this shaft here, I think you can just see that, can you? No, it's hidden by the main shaft a bit. I'll see if I can just move it over briefly. Uh, there, that shaft there, that uh, is the shaft that holds the gear selectors, the gear selector shaft. And and on this uh, gear selector shaft, uh, I think three uh, actual forks selectors. And what they do is they're, they're forks, and they go behind the gears, and they actually physically move the gears backwards and forwards. It selects. The gears then those forks are actually controlled by this cam plate you can see you can probably just see maybe that there's grooves in that and the selectors the selector forks sit in those grooves and then as the plate is rotated when you change gear by moving the gear lever up or down as that plate rotates the, the uh, forks follow the uh, slots in the cam plate uh, which uh, you know go at all different angles and that serves to move the the forks uh selector forks and they they then engage the gears okay so uh uh i'm going to start uh removing these and what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, lay the gears out in order on the bench on on the bike lift uh just to as an aid memoir i haven't actually taken the gearbox apart i think for several years and um, you think you remember it, and of course you don't. So just as an aid to me, when I take the semi off, I'm going to put it on the bench, facing the right way up, in the right order, uh, just to make life easier for reassembly. So lay shaft. I'm going to move this dog. All right, then, of course, the, the next thing on the lay shaft is the circlip here. And so I'm going to have to be removing that circlip. Uh, let's have a look. Yeah, and I can't move... I can't remove... Uh, the other gears until this circlip on the uh, on the lay shaft uh, is removed and I can take this this gear off the lay shaft so we'll do that now okay I've uh, removed the uh, circlip and what I'm doing now is I'm loosening off this rather strange looking nut here this is the uh, gearbox uh, plunger nut and if you look at the, the top there there you can probably just see the, a little ball and that's the top of the plunger and the plunger go sits on the edge of this cam wheel and that provides a solid gear change but it, it's also it's actually pretty tight so what I'm doing is I'm going to I'm loosening off this nut I'm probably going to remove it completely to take the plunger off and that will just free up all the tension in the gearbox and it will enable me then to remove this uh, gear fork selector shaft which should then enable me to take off the rest of the gears. Uh, okay, so loosening and removing this first. Right, so there's the uh, plunger removed. Now you can see why this is such a long strange nut because it has this spring-loaded plunger inside it. And as I say, that plunger then comes up through the bottom of the gearbox and runs on the edge of the cam plate. And the cam plate is now totally free because we've removed that plunger. And now everything's a bit loosened up. We should, we should make it easier for us to dismantle the rest of the gearbox. And actually, before I remove that shaft, I'm just going to show you, now that the cam plate's free, if you look in... You can see as I turn the cam plate and then the selector forks move around and they are literally moving the gears backwards and forwards uh, to select the right, uh, the right gears. And hence the expression of cog swapping because they're literally swapping the cogs between the various gears to select the, the, the particular gear that we want. Okay, and that's how the gearbox works. Right, I've got a problem on my gearbox in the fact that at the moment I can't remove the uh, gear selector shaft. Uh, the gear fork, uh, so these are the gear forks that will sit on the shaft and they're the things that actually move the gears. You can see one of the selector forks moving there. But this shaft, it just uh, 
it, it's just a push fit into the end, into the back of the gearbox. You might just be able to see that machine uh, area there, and that's the end of the shaft. And this shaft simply just pushes into what's called a blind hole. Blind hole meaning that there's no uh, exit. It's just a, a drilling in the in the gearbox, and this goes in. There's no sort of corresponding hole at the back for it to go out, which is great because it stops oil, any oil leaks, etc. I think some earlier gearboxes did have a full hole, but then they used to leak oil. Uh, and in fact, we'll see later on, you'll see that the rear end of this shaft has actually got a flat on it. That flat is there so that when you do push this, this shaft in, um, it allows air to escape because uh, it is a very tight, tight fit. Uh, and so it makes sure the shaft goes fully home. But now I can't get this shaft out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat the back uh, side of the gearbox, the back end, which should hopefully expand the casing there and allow the shaft to come out. I'll just go around and we'll have a look. All right. Okay. So, uh, uh, all right. So I think this is the... Uh, that's that's the back. That's like a boss for the the back end of the uh, of that shaft. So uh, what I'm going to do is there's an oil seal here which runs on the gearbox bracket, stops the oil coming out of the back of the gearbox. So obviously I can't heat the casing up because I'll melt the oil seal. So I'll remove these screws. Take that. will remove the oil seal. Uh, there's also an oil seal in the in the top of the high gear, but I'll, I'll leave I'll leave that in. Um, but hey, it's difficult to get out uh, as it is, and I might replace it anyway, especially if I do melt it. Uh, and that's what I'll try. Now, this is uh, the back end of the lay shaft. Now, the back end of the lay shaft is, a, is a, a needle roller bearing. We'll see that when we get the gearbox apart. And that isn't a blind hole like, like that one. Um, and uh, so it's, it's actually the, it's like a closed bearing. And that bearing... Uh, makes a seal and what I've done there is I've just put some extra uh, gasket on there it looks like blue Hylomar just to ensure that doesn't leak okay and obviously it's worked because it's as dry as a bone back here but we'll, we'll, we'll be looking at that later on so that's obviously not a blind hole it's just it's a drilling that goes all the way through that is a blind hole and we're going to heat that and hopefully then be able to take out the uh, shaft that holds the, the selector forks Okay, I've loosened those screws. I've used uh, <clears throat> an impact driver, normal impact driver, uh, with a lump hammer because those screws were done up tight. Uh, there we go. I've removed the uh, screws from the oil seal carrier, and so that just pulls off. <clears throat> okay, uh, leaving that's the rather large uh, main bearing for the back of the gearbox, and. That's the boss. We're gonna we're gonna put heat on that and see if that will. So the uh, idea is the alloy will expand, uh, but the steel shaft won't as much, and so hopefully we'll be able to get that shaft out. And here we are, a bit of heat, uh, just heating up that area there. And give it a good bit of heat. And we'll see how we go. And I'm pleased to say that worked like a charm. And now the uh, yeah, the shaft, which uh, is free to pull out, just all the uh, selector forks uh, just loose now. There you can see it's got that flat that flat edge, edge on it. That's as I say, so that the idea is that so that when you push that home, it allows the air to come out, so that this this shaft goes fully home. The fork selector shaft is out, and that's freeing up the fork selectors, so they're now free of the cam plate. And that should hopefully mean, yep, yeah, that I can now start withdrawing the gears. So as I say, I'm going to lay them out in the right order. So I know I've got the lay shaft gears on my left. So there's that one. And then the first... Uh, so first fork selector second gear off the lay shaft then this double double gear off the uh, main shaft 
single gear off the main shaft just just giving them a very quick inspection as I take them off I'm not expecting to find any horrors and obviously they will be fully inspected uh, later on but I'll just give them a quick inspection again take the next uh, selector fork out so that allows the next gear to come off the lay shaft that's the middle selector so I'll put it there and then uh, we've got the final selector is that going to come out come out selector please ah there it is and that's the final gear selector so there's three uh, three forks okay now let's have a look can I get this off oh. And so that is the, uh, the the lay shaft. Now these last two gears, which are very important, and we'll look at those later on. I think that's uh, fifth gear and fourth gear. Uh, they stay on the shaft. And very important. We have to make sure that these two gears don't lock together. On earlier models, they can. These two gears get too close, and they actually lock together, and then they both try and engage at the same time, with horrendous consequences especially if you're doing 70 odd miles an hour down the motorway at the time and out comes oh that's good and out comes the uh, gearbox main shaft with the high gear woohoo and so then hopefully we can now just uh, ease off the uh, cam plate which has probably got a bit of oil there we go and that's it that is the that is the cam plate that's what I'm going to be replacing I'm not sure if it's a cause of all my woes I'm just looking to see if there's any warping these uh, these slots I'm trying to see what you can see on the camera uh, these slots do wear to be quite honest I don't know that worn on mine and I've got new uh, gearbox the, the selectors the forks sorry the forks are new so I know they're not because they they these uh, little bosses here run in these uh, in these slots and it's that as the gearbox moves around and moves them to different positions then they move the gears anyway but I'm going to be replacing that the only thing that, that I really noticed was that when I had the, the this plunger it was it was really tight it was you know the, the actual cam plate was really 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 tight and I'm wondering if there, there's something that I've had the wrong plunger or I've done it up too tight or something but it was actually really, really hard to turn this round. And as soon as I, you know, it was a lot, so much easier with the plunger loose. So I wonder if it's that that's my problem. Whatever the case, I will be replacing the cam plate for the, for the later, later model. And as far as I'm concerned, that's just about it uh, for dismantling. I'll just show you a couple of things. Okay, so uh, these are the innards of the gearbox to the left. This is the gearbox uh, main bearing, main roller bearing, which uh, uh, which runs on this uh, high gear or, or sleeve gear. Okay, and obviously you want to make sure that that's in perfect condition. Now, in my case, I've only done, uh, I'm not sure, a couple of thousand miles at most since I rebuilt this gearbox and I replaced all the bearings and so on when I when I first rebuilt it so I won't be replacing them if I was rebuilding this for the first time uh, you know in, in a long while I'd almost definitely be replacing well all the bearings as a matter of course just for peace of mind because it's such a big job that you don't want to take it all apart and think oh that bearing's okay it's not bad but the whole thing back together and then the bearing fails so something to bear in mind uh, now if you remember I showed you the inner this is the inner gearbox case and that is the thrust washer at the outer end of the uh, lay shaft and this is the thrust washer and it sits on that peg and then fits around that needle roller there okay and it's exactly the same in the back of the gearbox that's the thrust washer will it come off hmm. of course it doesn't want to come off um, I think I might have fixed it on. It's held on again with a pin there, but it's got to sit around this needle roller bearing. 
So that needle roller bearing has got to be fitted just proud of the casing so that the thrush washer sits on it. But not so proud as that it sits out beyond the thrush washer, in which case obviously all the weight will go on the, the bearing. So it's just got to stick out. There is a, actually a dimension how much that sticks out. And, the, uh, and there is a special tool that you can get when you actually put that needle roller bearing in. And there's a special tool you can get, which I haven't got, but you can get, it might be worth getting, that allows you to punch that, drift that bearing in uh, and to just exactly the right uh, amount. But when we come to rebuilding the gearbox, we'll go through that again. And that is the back end of the needle roller bearing. And that is the back end of that blue blob on this there. That's the back end of that uh, needle roller bearing. And that's why I've got that gunge there, because it can it can leak. The gunge, to be honest, is probably a bit unnecessary, but you know, I thought I'd put some on just to be on the safe side. And it certainly doesn't, doesn't seem to be leaking. Uh, what else? Uh, I think that's probably about it in here. That's the that's where the cam plate uh, runs on, uh, and this side that is just a drilling. So that when they made the gearbox, they could actually drill through to actually drill that that boss. Okay, so that's just blanked off. So ignore that hole. Uh, that's where the plunger, and uh, that's where the plunger uh, comes in, and that's the drain. Uh, you can see there, that's the drain plug there. All right. Uh, so what we're going to, what I'm going to do now is now it's all apart. I'll clean everything. We'll give it a very close inspection. See if I can find any problems or any wear, uh, and then start start the rebuild. And as I say, my first uh, impressions are that everything's good as I thought it probably would be. Uh, and the only real problem I've got I can see is that maybe I had a problem with the plunger and it was just too tight for whatever reason. Nothing else seems to be tight, even though even though the uh, uh, the selector shafts, the fork selector shaft was tight in there. I know that the actual uh, selector forks were sliding easily on the shaft. So I don't think that's a problem. I thought, well, maybe that shaft's bent and that's why it's tight. But no, I think it was just tight in in its hole. And the actual, I noticed that the, the selectors were, were sliding freely on the shaft. So I don't think that's a problem. Uh, this seemed quite free, especially after I got the um the plunger out it didn't seem to be fouling on the uh uh it, apparently they can you know it can these teeth can be too tight on these teeth uh and so it can be bind and make it tight but i i did check and this was you know this was free it wasn't fouling uh the teeth were engaged without being too tight so that wasn't a problem uh okay anyway dismantling complete um we'll start an inspection uh, and then uh, reassembly. As you can see, I've laid everything out in order. I've tried to put it facing out the right way. So this is uh, outwards, up, upwards is outwards as it were. Uh, uh, only because it just makes it a, a assembly a bit easier. I'll photograph everything uh, as well. So that if I do think, hang on, which bit goes on next? When we come to put it back together, uh, I'll have a reference. Okay. And so there we are, gearbox, uh, gearbox dismantled.